welcome to Desk of Lady Ada. Oh, you caught me mid-engineering. That's great. It's time for Desk of Lady because it's Sunday night. What we do every Sunday night at Lady Ada o'clock, which is not necessarily 8 o'clock. It might be a little bit later because I'm sometimes late. Um, is we see what's going on on my desk. What have I been working on? What am I engineering? So uh, let's let's chat about. It. Do you have any updates from Fruit Fruitland? You want to chat about? No, just um, please everybody wear a mask and reconsider your travel plans. We want to see and be with all of you next year, and a lot of it just requires a little bit of planning, maybe a little bit of postponement of your holiday plans. It's worth it. Do a lot of electronics over the next. But couple yeah, of do electronics, and we're going to be. We do our weekly shows. We have live streams yeah. plenty. Um, speaking of live streams, one of um, the uh, projects from 3D Hangouts, one of the latest ones from Known Pedro, is this cool all-in-one camera case for the BrainCraft hat, which we now have plenty of in stock. So if you've been uh, wanting one of our BrainCraft hats, uh, we made a you know a big run of like 500 pieces, and so we've got tons of them, and um, it has. Uh, you know, display and LEDs and sound. Actually, you know, let's show it on the overhead, and I'll I'll chat about, I'll chat about it here. Um, so yeah, the BrainCraft hat, which we we designed like a year ago, and just everything got delayed with COVID, but we finally got it out. Uh, you know, a couple months ago, um, it's got a TFT screen and stem QT connector, speaker output, headphone output, L joystick, a button, uh, dot star LEDs, and um, on the back, it's got a connection for a fan so you can cool off your Raspberry Pi 4 because uh, it gets hot when it's doing vision inferences um, and uh, audio um, subsystem so it adds two analog microphones and um, speaker output for doing uh, voice recognition. So it's kind of designed because we've been doing a lot of um, projects with the Raspberry Pi to do machine learning because the Pi 4 is kind of fast enough uh, to do uh, machine learning. But we'll, we'll chat more about this in a moment. Um, some stuff that we worked on a bunch this weekend, uh, especially Friday and Saturday, is uh, we've got the MagTag board out in the world. We shipped out a, like you know a couple hundred of these so far, and um, you know the ESP32 S2, which is the main processor on the MagTag. Sorry about it. Uh, it's kind of new, so we're we're learning about it. Um, I will say that the Arduino core is is not quite ready to be used unless you're uh, really excited about trying different compiler branches um, or IDF branches. But uh, in CircuitPython, it's actually working quite well. We're, we're squishing bugs and we have a new library for managing the MagTag that lets you um, write example sketches very easily. So this one, for example, uh, is a simple clock. I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's cool. It goes on the internet and it gets the local time. And what's nice is that it, um, it handles like your time zone and daylight savings and like you know, like I was chatting with someone on Discord and they're like, oh yeah, there's a time zone that's off by 45 minutes instead of like a half an hour, an hour. Anyways, if you go online and get Wi-Fi time, you never have to worry about any of that because like their server, you know, our Adafruit IO time server handles it all for you. And then you can display like these beautiful um, large digits. Um, you know, this is a Helvetica 100 point font and maybe I'll uh, kind of force this to restart. Oops. Hold on. There you go. And you can see um, the ripple shows up on uh, the display because it's built in. So you can see I, I controlled seed and, and restarted. Um, so what's neat is that um, this is like the first time we have an all-in-one Wi-Fi chip that has USB. They can do circuit Python, And it's a great match for e-ink because um, we don't have two processors. We only have one processor, which means we can go into a deep sleep mode to reduce power. So that's not in circuit Python yet, but it's coming very soon. We're still working on the API. We're going to add deep sleep mode. Um, Arduino can do deep sleep, but Arduino also is having some other like weird issues that um, as they're as they're updating the IDF. So that's why I suggest uh, Circuit Python. Even if you don't get deep sleep mode, you can at least um, get your design programmed in. So I'm going to design a 4.2 inch version of this next. The 2.9 was just to get started because it felt like a very comfortable um, small, you know, it's like credit card size. But I do want to have a 4.2 inch one because I think that'll look really cool, like a really big display. And what's neat is that even though it's a bigger display, it doesn't take that much more power to update because it's still a static display. Like you update it and then you go to sleep. Um, so you'll be able to put a much bigger battery behind it, but uh, it won't need more power. Like usually big TFTs need a bigger backlight. So if you, um, if you have a MagTag, uh, 
check out um, on our GitHub the MagTag library for CircuitPython. We have some examples. And uh, in Discord, we're chit-chatting with people. So um, lots of cool, fun projects coming out. And we have some videos we'll, we'll post during the week. So that's the MagTag. So that's another thing we worked on. Any, anybody have any questions or comments yet? Yeah, it looks like the display. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I like it. Uh, we also did, you know, there's always a STEMA Sunday. Um, the thermal cameras have been very difficult to get in the last few months, basically, ever since March. It was challenging to get thermal sensors and thermal cameras. There, all the, the fabrication capability has been used up to make, you know, thermal non-contact sensors and cameras for buildings. Like the demand suddenly went from people just doing, like, you know, uh, building um, thermal analysis to, like, everyone's getting thermal scandal a time for fevers. But the Panasonic AMG 8833s are kind of coming back into stock. Like, we could not get any for six months. And then all of a sudden, our back order from, like, January came in. We got, like, a 1,000 pieces, and so these are back in stock. Um, and so I had an old revision that I was actually able to now revisit, which is um, the AMG 8833. I wanted to stem QTFI it. So it's actually the same size. Um, but now it has STEM QT connectors. I had to like twist this around, but um, I think it's fun because we can now plug and play this into like something like the, the BrainCraft hat. So they make thermal camera machine learning projects maybe instead of just a Raspberry Pi camera. Uh, okay, so then the thing I was actually kind of working on the most... Um, oh, before you oh, get yeah. started on that, can you put the mag tag back on there and show the battery? question was, what is the capacity of the battery that you have on the MagTag? Um, this battery is, is like 400, 420 milliamp hours. You could probably fit like a 500 milliamp hour battery. There's, there, there is like a flat spot for it. Um, I just like the 420 because the short cable. Um, we used this for the, um, uh, what was it? The Pi Gamer, same yeah. battery. It's a cute little battery. It's, it's thin and, uh, you know, it, it fits nicely between um the two pieces of plastic and you know you get the magnets on the back so okay. you know the the sleep mode current of this board is about 250 microamperes if you look at the mag tag um learn guide I actually break down exactly what that's all used for it's like 40 microamps for the green led uh 50 microamps for the regulator 50 microamps for the esp and then 100 regulate uh, microamps for the um, the ink display. The ink display, the data sheet says it can go down to one microamp, but I could not figure out what magic command mode or thing you have to do to get it to do that. Um, every way I tried, I could not get it less than 100 microamps. So, I mean, the data sheets for these ink displays are like all lies. So it's not surprising to me. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if anyone can get the ink on its own to go down into a one microamp uh, sleep mode. Um, like with measurements, um, not with literally disconnecting the power supply. Like if I disconnect the three volt power supply, yes, it of course drops down to zero. And um, I could redesign it to add a switch for that, but I'd kind of prefer not to. I like, you know, I would like to have the ink display active and then go into its own deep sleep mode. I know it should be possible, but. Okay, other question, does it come with the acrylic back? It does not, this is just a laser cut yeah, piece. We're just Playing around with some ideas right now yeah. for some stuff. Yeah, so you can, um, but you can we, cut your own. When we have these available, we'll let you know. Okay. It's 9.33. All right. Oh, wait, it's 9.34, so it's time to keep going. Okay, and then um, that looks really interesting and exciting. Maybe you can zoom in on that. That looks like... This is very interesting. Yeah, this was this. sent to me by Google, um, but it's available on their site. Um, but they just sent me a couple pieces. So this a is machine a machine learning module. This is a Coral TPU. So these are, you know, when you run TensorFlow on... Well, if you run TensorFlow at all, you'll know that you need to have um, either a very, very fast processor or ideally optimized hardware, like a you know, video card and video video cards, for example, are optimized for TensorFlow to let you like do you know, 40, 50, 60 times faster inferences um, because you have specialized hardware to do the, the kind of mathematical calculations that a lot of, especially vision models, want you to do. Um, the, you know, a lot of projects are, are vision recognition. And uh, you can get up to like 100 plus frame per second um, as fast as your camera can get the data. However, you do need some extra accelerator um, support. So there's been for, you know, Raspberry Pi and other computers, the USB adapter TPU that was like this kind of chunky thing. Um, it was like 
like 50, 60 bucks, and you plug it in, and then if you ran a special type version of Compile TensorFlow, it knew to use this external USB device as an assistant. And what's neat is they've actually kind of like gotten this whole um, TPU down into this very small shape. And um, you can get it off of the Google sites about 20 bucks a piece. Um, what's neat about this is there's a lot of pins, but actually only like 10 of them are used. There's a PCI port, so you can like turn this into an M2 card for like laptops or whatever. And it's got just like the USB pins, like literally just USB 2.0, data plus, data minus, ground and power. Um, and so I wanted to make a little breakout for this cool board. So let's go to the, the uh, computer. Um, so let me pull up. Yes, yeah, so this is the accelerator. And you can see it here, Coral.ai accelerator module. So this is like a little surface mount chip. Um, you can pre-order it. And um, it has a, like a power manager in it. And it can do PCIe and USB 2.0. It can ship to many countries, although not all it is um, export controlled. And um, they have some guides as well. But what's really neat is just how extremely small it is. It's like it's tiny. And uh, hold on. We also, yeah, they have it in like, this is kind of what it is, I think, minus like the power supply stuff. This is um, the card. And then this is the USB dongle, which I think was 100 bucks and now it's like 60 bucks. And then um, the dev board is now 130. And then they've got like a little mini um, Linux dev board. Kind of, they're kind of going into like, look, I mean, Google is TensorFlow. TensorFlow is Google. They, they, they can optimize a lot. So these are, um, you know, Raspberry Pi accessories and stuff. But I thought this was kind of nifty. So um, if you look at the data sheet, um, it's basically this. There's really not a lot going on here. The module has a crystal. It has a basic power control. Uh, it has some, you know, reset, but basically it has is PCIe or USB. Like it's almost all ground pins, like ground, 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 VN, VN, VN. And then uh, down here, there's actually like, you know, a couple data pins. So I thought I would just use probably USB, but I'll, I'll might break out all of them. So it's going to be useful for people who want to implement this chip into their own device. Because um, it's pick and placeable, it's, it's inexpensive. You know, quantity, it'll probably get down to like, you know, 10 bucks or something if it's one if one offs are, are $20 uh, so hopefully it'll also be available from distributors soon so the one thing that was interesting about this is there's just like you really need to deal with the vast amount of power that this thing wants um, it spikes up to 3 amps so it, it draws 500 milliamps normally from 3.3 volts but it spikes up to 3 amps which is a lot of current and um, to get that much current over USB, well, first off, you, you absolutely definitely are going to need a buck converter because you can't just pull three amps. There's no, there's like five volt, two and a half amp power supplies, but I, it's almost, it's rare to see a five volt three amp. And even then, you really want to, you don't want to have that heat dissipation of five volt to three volt at three amps. Like no linear, I mean, a linear regulator will, will definitely be able to handle the transients better, but... Um, I think a buck converter is the right thing to do. So that's where I started looking for a buck converter, which leads us into the oh, great search. It's time. It's that time. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ Key. Every single week we do the great search, brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey, for supporting our show. Yay, thank you. And uh, Lady Ada, what are you looking for this week on the great search? Okay, so um, back to my computer. We are looking to use this chip, the Coral Accelerator Module, uh, a machine learning accelerator chip. I want to make a breakout for it and maybe start, maybe, you know, implementing stuff for Raspberry Pi on it. I think that would be cool. It, however, has really... Um, Let's see, I have to find the location where it is. It has pretty serious power supply requirements. Um, if you go down to, hold on, power on sequence, power network, power delivery network design, it can, it normally drives, it normally draws about 500 milliamps, but it can spike up to three amps uh, very quickly, which means, first of all, we're gonna need Big ass capacitors. Okay, so we'll get maybe get the 
gigantic capacitors um, next week on the Great Search. But for now, I want to get some sort of buck regulator because I want to power this off of USB. I want something that'll convert to about 4.5 to 5.5 down to 3.3 at like three plus amps, which is like not a small amount of current. I mean, like it's not a ton of current, believe me. I know people who are like, they deal with hundreds of amps of current, but for like, you know, small electronics, that's, that's quite a bit. So um, this is kind of an interesting thing because the normal way you I would search is, you know, you go to DigiKey and you're like, well, I mean, maybe I'll search for 3.3 uh, buck converter, right? And you can do it this way. Um, you can go to, you know, DC, DC regulators, and you can search for them. But I'll say that there's actually almost like too many options. Like power supplies are, if it's a linear regulator, it's pretty easy. But if it's a buck converter, um, the problem is there's, there's like, there's chips that can do buck and boost. Um, there's ones that have fixed or um, adjustable voltages. And it can get actually a little challenging because also, you know, you want the, the current output, but sometimes it's like the switch current and like the frequency. I, I actually don't end up usually, for, for power regulators like this, this is one of the few things that actually don't go straight to DigiKey which is weird because you're like, why am I watching the great search if you're not actually going to search on DigiKey? But what happens is I search at, at, you know, I look to see what kind of company makes the parts I'm looking for. And then I look on their site because they're just going to be much better at, um, like, for example, you still have to deal with like things like, you know, thermal management and efficiency. And you're going to be able to get much more specific searches on those sites for this specific type of problem. I'll say the same thing for microcontrollers. Power supply managers and microcontrollers are the two things where I usually go to the manufacturer page and then I bounce back to Juki to find like what's in stock and what's available and I kind of go between the two. So um, I happen to like TI uh, buck converters. I do make a ton of them. Another thing is I have to say I'm very picky. I actually kind of like the latest converters. I know that there's like, you know, the oldies and goodies, the LM like 76s or whatever, but I really like to have kind of the latest. So what I end up doing is I end up going to TI's website. And if you buy samples from TI, by the way, they ship the DigiKey. And then here I go through to products and power management. Now again, I don't do this for everything, but I do do this for some boost and buck converters especially ones where I'm, I'm, I'm very specific about, I need like very high current or very specific voltage or specific, very um, specific requirements, not just like, oh, generic, you know, I just need like a hundred milliamps at five volts. You can get that anywhere. But three, uh, three to four amps from uh, to three volts is a little tougher. So um, I'm going to look for buck regulators and I don't want ones with the integrated inductor. I, I'm not, super into those yet. They're cool, but I, I'm not quite ready. I don't know. Maybe maybe next year I'll be ready for those. I, I like to have the separate um, regular uh, inductor. So um, they have a couple different options. They have a controller. These are where you have external MOSFETs. This is great for extraordinarily high currents, extremely high voltages, like really like weird messed up situations that I don't usually deal with. Um, for most Things I just want to convert it. I want it to regulate it. It has a built-in MOSFETs. I just give it capacitor inductor. I'm good to go. Just, most people make you happy. And this is what I really like. It's like they have this very nice search system, it's like the quick search, where I just kind of give it approximately what I want, and it will give me options. Um, and it will kind of winnow through all, like, you know, there's like 100 different buck converters. So for USB, you know, basically the voltage can be as little as four volts. I know 4.5 is the specification, but you know, if I'm, if I'm pulling a lot of current, I want it to be able to run down at four volts. Um, the max is gonna be 5.5. I want 3.3 volt output and I want 3.5 amps. And you're like, well, wait a minute. You, you know, the data sheet said three amps. I know, but I like to give it always like 10, 15% extra. That seems like a wise idea. So, and I don't care about the quiescent because this isn't battery powered. This thing is going to be plugged into the wall. So who cares about the quiescent? No problem. And you can see that there's more, you know, you can do the little draggy drops and, and, and change this around if you want. Um, I can adjust the, the current maximum and, and the duty cycle requirements. 
Um, you know, I don't really care about the safety category. Um, for the package groups, you know, I, I don't want BGAs, but I don't think I need to mess with this yet. Um, for rating, I don't need automotive. Usually there's an automotive version and a, and a catalog version. I, you know, I'll just cut it in half by only looking at those. And then, so, you know, now you only have a couple options, which is really nice. I like that. There's, there's not a lot of, um, things you have to worry about. There's, there are only a couple options. And, um, you can look at the, the packages, you know, to see, get an idea of, like, some of these are kind of big. They're HT SOPs, and I don't really want those. Um, but, you know, the top one is kind of nifty. I mean, first off, it's, it's inexpensive. It runs at a kind of a mind-boggling 2.4 megahertz uh which is you know nothing for a mac controller but for um a converter it's quite high and it's only six pins and you know i'm really into small number of pins <laughs> smaller the better um the, but there's a couple other good options there's the tps 62095 i've used the tps 62 series quite a bit um it's a it's a lovely little series so i can check out all these but let's maybe start with this one um and then you can you know you can actually go into like these other like web bench designers. I actually haven't used this before, but you can like do simulations and stuff. Um, you can check out the data sheet. Let me open up the data sheet. And um, yeah, so it's a, it's a series that's available in different currents, which is actually kind of nice. I like that. It's like you can, you can, you know, pick this up with the, the internal MOSFETs have different current uh, ca carrying capacity. You'll have to, uh, um, have more um, capacitance, of course, and a different size inductor. But for the most part, you can you can pick which one you like. And uh, this seems you know nice and simple, right? You know, you just you just need an inductor, a couple capacitors. Thing is, you know, you're not going to get um, great efficiency at uh, four amp current. But let's see, you know, V out three point three at. Uh, from VN, okay, like, you know, 90-ish percent. So that's not bad. I think this is pretty good. So this might be a good option. And then what I do is once I, I find this, I take the the beginning part of the um, the part number, because you can see it's a series. The X means it's like, you know, it's one, two, three, four, for like one, two, three, four amps. I go here and then I just type it in and I can see what the options are. So there's actually a couple things. There's uh, ooh, new. There's some new dev boards. So um, they do have an eval board. You know, I usually don't get eval boards, but for power supplies, I sometimes do because um, power supply layout, you really, you know, you can look at the Gerbers, but sometimes having it, it's very handy. You can really see if you're able. I, I've designed power supplies and, you know, not, had like two ounce copper, not had four layer PCBs, and I haven't quite gotten the current output I was expecting. And sometimes getting the eval board helps me determine, is it the chip or is it my layout? Is it like my capacitor inductor or is it, you know, what is it that is keeping me from getting what I think I should be getting out of the power supply? So I'll probably pick up one of these eval boards, 60 bucks, it's not, you know, it's not bad. And then um, over here, I've got the regulators, and it looks like there's a couple options, fixed and not, and then this is the full series. So this is the uh, one that I want. I think this one is the 4 amp version. So they have a couple in stock. Um, and yeah, you know, when you get to a tape and wheel, they're 88 cents, which is a good deal. You know, with the inductors, you know, the inductors, like maybe, you know, a dollar capacitor for, sorry, a dollar for the capacitor inductors. Whole power supply is maybe two bucks. Um, it's active. You know, you can download, um, looks like they have a CAD model even, so I can get started instantly. And uh, I like that it's just small, you know, like it's small, I don't need a special heat sinking. Um, I'll just check the data sheet to make sure that I can, uh, I can use this on a two layer board and I'll plug this next to the core module and uh, I'll try it out. I'll just try, you know, decoding a couple uh, models like you know vision models and first off see if I can get the performance and then use my oscilloscope um, to make sure that my 3.3 volt line is nice and steady so that's the next step for this design so very excited 
the TPS 62-827. Okay, and that's this week's... The Buck Converter of the Week. Great search for Digicate. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with Digicate. Okay. All right. Well, it's 950. Yeah. So, uh, wrap up. Anybody got... No, you got to all questions? the questions. You got to the questions earlier. Ah, oh, sweet. Thanks so much for doing that. A couple good questions about the display and more, and then people really like the mag tag. We'll have more in stock. Yes, we're making more. Probably. We got more PCBs, and I, I have a little typo. It says NeoPixels on pin four. It's actually pin one. The it's the pad is pin four, so we got a little typo. Yeah. So that's why I had to get no, new PCBs. So we're gonna redo the silk screen a little bit to fix that typo, and uh, we'll fab more. I, yeah. Yeah, I sometimes have typos. It's all good. Oh, yeah, and for the folks, uh, thanks for the reminder. Oh, hit like and subscribe because <laughs> we're YouTube. We're That's YouTubers. right. All right. Uh, okay, thanks, cool. everybody. We'll see you during the week. We have a bunch of videos that we'll be posting up soon, some uh, behind-the-scenes stuff and more. Thanks for making this a uh, pleasant Sunday night. And, again, um, hey, everybody, we got to get through the next couple of months together. So wear a mask, talk to your family, talk to your friends. And come by our streams if you're lonely. Yeah. We're here. We're hanging out. As we're answering questions, we'll say hello. We say happy birthday to people on request as well. And uh, check us out on Discord. If you have a mag tag, come by Discord if you need help getting it set up. We're, you know, we have a guide um, up that we just published as well. Um, I'd love to see people do some fun um, magnetic-themed e-ink projects. I've always yeah. liked e-ink a lot. I'm glad that we finally have a board I think that is uh, worthy of all the cool e-ink displays that are available. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, we have a 20% off coupon right oh, now. Yeah. If you just log into your account or make an account and yeah. do two-factor authentication two -factor. and verify your email verify address. Account. Two things, but they're free to do. Yeah, so security professionals love this. They're like, Adafruit, thank you for doing this. This is a good incentive to get people to secure their accounts and expect that from other e-com sites. So that's why we're doing that. We want you to secure your account we're giving you 20% off, which is pretty much the biggest sale of the year. So It's not going to get better than that. Go ahead and do that. And it's 20% it's off pretty much everything except for like gift certificates, subscriptions, and Raspberry Pi computers. Yeah. So we'll see everybody during the week. We'll send out some reminders uh, on social media about that because we don't spam people. We don't do anything like no, that. No, this is... And that's why so we have to tell you about stuff because we don't, uh, we don't do anything uh, like that at all. We never will. Uh, because we say that on video all the time and people would just play it back over and over. So, you know, that's why we hold ourselves accountable. All right, everybody. We'll see Thanks, you everybody. next week. Bye.